Hello, today I'm going to be comparing the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro with the Pixel Watch. And the first thing I'm going to start by doing is just turning them both on. I have one on each side here, so I'll turn them both on. Home screen, 2.32 p.m. 2.32 p.m. 2.32 p.m. So as you can see, the Galaxy Watch turned on faster, but it said home screen before it said the time, so technically the Pixel Watch gave me the time first. And sometimes the Pixel Watch does say home screen before the time. It might depend on whether you were last on the home screen or not when you last, used, last used your watch, but the Galaxy Watch will always say home screen before the time. Okay, so I'm going to bring up the apps menu on each of them to try to compare responsiveness. So this is just a list of apps here. I'm going to try to swipe at the same time. But I have one in each hand. I don't know how this is going to work. <laughs> we'll find out. Hello. Recent apps. Assistant. Gone. Camera. Help. Guardian. Help monitor. So I'm swiping at the same time. Or trying my best to. Contacts. Samsung Health Monitor. Maps. Easy Voice Recorder. Play Find my phone. Compass. Fitbit ECG. Fitbit Find Exercise. So as you can see, they're pretty close to each other. I couldn't notice any difference in day-to-day -day usage as to which one was laggier. I'm not impressed with either of them. I wish they were both more responsive, but comparing them next to each other, I don't notice a difference. So I'll just talk about the navigational differences between the two. On the Galaxy Watch, you... So if you're on the home screen, home screen, 2:34 p.m. 2:34 p.m. You swipe down from the top to get to your quick panel. Quick panel page one of three. Home screen. Or you'd swipe. 2:34 p.m. Up from the bottom with two fingers. Apps. To get to your apps. 2:35 p.m. And you would swipe right with two fingers to get to your notifications or swipe left with two fingers to get to your tiles. And you would just keep swiping to go th through each tile or to go through each notification. So that's how the Galaxy Watch is set up. On the Pixel Watch... Home screen, 2.35 p.m. Unread notification, 2.35 p.m. On the Pixel Watch, you swipe down with two fingers quick settings. to get to Press quick settings. Scroll up to return to watch face. So that's so that's the same. PM. Unread notification. But you to get to your notifications, you swipe up with two fingers. Notifications. And on the Pixel Watch, if you swipe left with two fingers or right with two fingers, it'll take you to your tiles. So if you have a whole bunch of tiles and you just want to go to the last one, you would swipe right. Uh, if you want to go to the first one, you would swipe left. So it, the navigation wraps around there on the Pixel Watch. And so that's as far as the swipe gestures. There's also a crown on the Pixel Watch and a bezel on the Galaxy Watch. And on this exact model of the Galaxy Watch, it's a digital crown, so you have to rotate your finger around the edge. But if you're on the home screen, or anywhere really, rotating the crown on the Pixel Watch or the bezel on the Galaxy Watch will scroll the page. But if you're on the home screen, rotating the bezel on the Galaxy Watch will go through your tiles or your notifications depending on which way you rotate it. And on the Pixel Watch, rotating the crown will bring down the quick panel or quick settings or bring up your notifications and scroll through your notifications. Now as far as buttons go, 
On the Galaxy Watch, there's a home button and a back button. The home button takes you to the home screen. The back button takes you back. <laughs> so that's pretty straightforward. However, you can customize the back button to take you to your recents if you want to on the Galaxy Watch. And you cannot customize the double press of the recents. That will take you to Samsung Pay. You can, however, customize a long press or a double press of the home button to whatever you want. So right now I have my long press set to Google Assistant, my double press set to Bixby. As for the buttons on the Pixel Watch, <laughs> sorry, this is confusing, but the crown will take you home. If you're already on the home screen, meaning the watch face, you press the crown again, that's how you get to your apps. A long press of the crown will bring up the power menu. The side button on the Pixel Watch, a single press brings up recents. A double press will take you into the last app you're using. And a triple press turns on and off talkback. And none of those are customizable on the Pixel Watch. And speaking of the talkback shortcut on the Galaxy Watch, you can make it a triple tap with two fingers on the screen or a double tap of the home button. Okay, so got all the navigational stuff out of the way. So I'm going to turn off TalkBack on the Pixel Watch by triple pressing the side key. TalkBack off. 2.42 p.m. Now I'm going to turn it off on the Galaxy Watch by triple pressing with two fingers. And the reason I'm going to do this next part with TalkBack off is because it will talk while you're trying to use Google Assistant on either of these watches, which is annoying, but that's how it is. So I'm just going to compare the speed of Google Assistant from the screen off state. I'll do the Galaxy Watch first. I'll let you know when I press the button. And then you'll know when it's ready to listen because I'll start talking. I'm just going to ask for the time. I'm going to press, this is the Galaxy Watch, and so I'm going to press it now. What time is it? It's 2.43 p.m. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the Pixel Watch. I'm going to press it now. What time is it? 2.43 p.m. So as you can see, the it takes a little bit longer to be ready to listen on the Pixel Watch, but I think the actual getting your answer takes the same amount of time, no matter which one you're using. Okay, so next I'm just going to compare the accessibility settings between the two. So right now I'm on the Galaxy Watch and I'm just going to swipe through the settings so you can hear what's there. Functions you're using, using three functions. Talk back. Visibility enhancements. Hearing enhancements. Interaction and dexterity. Advanced settings. Installed apps. Looking for this. Okay, so that was everything in the accessibility settings here. I'm going to go back to visibility. Interaction and dex hearing enhancements. Visibility enhancements. Visibility enhancements. High contrast fonts off. High contrast fonts. Color correction off. Color correction. Color inversion off. Color inversion. Add color filter off. Add color filter. Remove animations off. Remove animations. Reduce transparency and blur off. Reduce transparency and blur. Magnification on. 
magnification. Bold font off. Bold font. Font size. Font size. And that's all that's inside the visibility enhancements. Visibility enhancements. So I'm also going to go down to hearing enhanced interaction and advanced settings. Advanced settings. Advanced settings. Accessibility shortcuts using one function. So there's an accessibility shortcut where you can customize it. So you can change it to toggle any thing you want rather than just talk back. You can have it turn on magnification or color inversion or any of the other accessibility services that are on here. Vibration watch on. Vibration watch. This is huge. This is the ability of you to be able to have your watch vibrate the time to you without making any sound. Time to take action default. You can adjust the time to take action. And that's all that's in the advanced accessibility settings. And here's what's in the accessibility settings on the Pixel Watch. Not checked. Magnification. Magnification. Talk back. Talk back. Font size. Font size. Sound. Sound. Vibration. Vibration. Real time text RTT. Real time text. Text to speech output. Text to speech output. Not checked. Power button ends call. Power button ends call. And as you can see, that's the end of the accessibility settings page. And it everything is on this page. It's not split into sections because, as you could tell, there's a lot less on the Pixel Watch. One of the big things that's missing here is the vibration time. So there's no way for your Pixel Watch to tell you what time it is through vibrations. It's also missing color inversion. Bold text, high contrast text, as well as a couple of other accessibility features. So Samsung has really added a lot in this area. Just a couple of thoughts comparing Bixby to Google Assistant, because if you're using your watch, you're probably going to want to use Bixby if you're using a Galaxy watch because it can do a lot of things Google Assistant can't do. For example, if you want to just say, turn on do not disturb, or you wanna say, set my screen brightness to X level, or you want to say, uh, set volume to X level, that's stuff you can do with Pixby, and none of that stuff currently works with Google Assistant, even on the Pixel Watch. So that's, something I've noticed using both these because I do use voice commands for as many things as I would like to. And speaking of voice commands, Google Assistant and Bixby both will not read your text messages back to you if you say, you know, text so-and-so. It'll say, what do you want to say? You say it, and it will just say, do you want to send this? And... If you say, read it to me, read it back to me, what's it say, any of that, it'll just get confused. And if you try to read what's on the screen with TalkBack, it'll just even get even more confused because it'll hear what TalkBack's saying. So it's basically not possible to send a message confidently and actually know what message is being sent by using either voice assistant. Bixby or Google Assistant. And I just want to talk about screen size for a minute. Now, I know the Galaxy Watch comes in smaller sizes, but I personally love the larger screen. It's so much easier to do any gesture, whether it's an angled gesture, a back and forth gesture, or even just a Tap with two fingers. For me, it's much easier with the larger screen. That's something I've been struggling with with the Pixel Watch. And I would imagine it would be the same if I was using a Galaxy Watch 5 uh, 40 millimeter. Although that's just the watch size, that's not the screen size. So technically, 
the 41 millimeter Galaxy or 41 millimeter Pixel Watch is larger than the 40 millimeter Galaxy Watch, but I'm not so sure about the screen size because from what I hear, the Pixel Watch has quite a bezel, so it might actually have a smaller screen than any of the Galaxy Watches. I will say one thing that I really liked on the Pixel Watch that I didn't notice an option for on the Galaxy Watch is the ability to wear it in any orientation you want. So during setup, it asks you which hand you have it on and which side you want the crown to be on. So I like to wear my watch on the right hand. So I technically wear the watch upside down because I still want the crown to be on the left side where I can reach it with my left hand. So it asks you that during setup and it changes the screen orientation to be upside down basically so you can wear the watch upside down and still have it work correctly. And I haven't noticed an option to do that on my Galaxy watch. I would like to be able to wear it with the buttons on the left side so I can reach them with my left hand, but I haven't come across a way to do that. And for those of you that are curious about the microphone quality, I will record a sample recording on each of these watches and insert them here. This is a test recording using my Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. Just want to see how this sounds compared to the Pixel Watch. I'm holding the watch about 8 to 12 inches away from my mouth. And now this is a test recording coming from the Pixel Watch, comparing it to the previous recording from the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. And I am also holding this about the same distance away, 8 to 12 inches. And one last thing I will mention is the battery life, because that's what people seem to really care about. Now, obviously, the Watch 5 Pro has a much better battery life because it has double the size battery, basically. Now, that being said, I've been perfectly happy with the Pixel Watch the way I use it anyway. You know, I didn't work out with it. I don't do a whole lot on it, to be honest, because with either of these watches, you know, if it's easier for me to do something on my phone, I'm just going to pull out my phone and do it on my phone. So there's very few things that I actually do on the watches. But that being said, I could, I think I could get through a day no matter what. Using it the way I use it, I could get through two days on the Pixel Watch and probably five days on the Galaxy Watch. I'll just give you some numbers. So this is after two days of uses. So I took both watches off the charger in the morning and then went through that full day and the next full day and went to charge them at night. So, you know, it was probably around 40 hours that I had them off the charger. And my Pixel Watch was down to 25% and my Galaxy Watch was down to 70%. So that just goes to show I would have gotten a lot longer on the Galaxy Watch, but the Pixel Watch was plenty for me because in my routine, I would charge the watch once a day, no matter what. And I don't think it would ever not get through the day for me. So I hope this was informative and I hope it helps somebody to make a decision between these two watches. All right. Thanks for listening.